Hello and welcome to the workshop. I've got a Baldwin 1970s harpsichord to renovate. It's an electric one with um, pickups over here and a pickup along here. Um, it requires restringing and there's various issues with the jacks which I'll explain. These harpsichord jacks were designed and uh, manufactured as one unit. Um, they're 50 years old and the plastic's gone uh, rather brittle, particularly in the parts which are very thin. Um, and you'll see that the plectrum is dangling down a little bit, uh, so it's, it's not um, horizontal anymore, it's uh, pointing downwards. That means when it, the, the jack drops down after plucking the string, um, the uh, jack tends to hang on top of the string. Now to begin with I considered replacing all the jacks with a modified Bolton jack, something like this uh, design. Um, this works reasonably well. Um, the uh, spring there is much um, more flexible. The plectrum slight, points slightly upwards so it uh, returns easily. Um, and uh, that would be quite satisfactory. You could then keep all the original jacks um, in a box somewhere um, uh, for posterity. The only problem is with that uh, solution, uh, the original jacks are highly likely to get lost and separated from the instrument. Um, and so I've decided on another course of action, which is to cut out the uh, tongues on this instrument, including the plectra that are moulded in there, um, and replace the tongue uh, with a boxwood tongue, which I've made um, along traditional lines. I'll show you the process for putting that into the jack. First of all, I'm going to remove the little dampers and keep them safe for reuse. They just pop out of there um, and then I'm going to cut away uh, the old tongue um, and save that for posterity in a little bag which will be firmly attached underneath the harpsichord. So I then do the most critical operation of the whole thing which is to drill the hole in exactly the correct place for the pivots that goes through the tongue. Having done that um, I'm doing three further holes and these will accept the spring for the jack. I then need to introduce the axle into the little hole that I've made. It's quite a tight fit and it stays there and doesn't slide around. I'll be pushing through the pin So that then fits into the hole on the other side and I file off any excess pin. The next job can be quite fiddly. I've got a little bronze wire and I'm introducing that from the front of the jack into the lowest of the three holes that I made earlier. I'm bending that over so that it's close to the top where the tongue is and I'm bending this tight in there and then turn the jack over feed this back here this is the way that um, Morley used to, no, De Blaise used to make springs for their jacks and if you've nothing to put a bristle into it, it's a useful alternative so that's pulled through there. This is bent there. This is cut off here. So here's the easy bit. Put that in the vise, tighten up the vise really nice and tight and that flattens all the spring against the jack body. Take it out perfect. And I'm taking this spring and I'm bending the very end of it so that it doesn't dig into the tongue. And then I am curving that so that the spring then is going to bear down. I'm bending it so that it's in the right place. So it bears down onto that tongue there. At this point I take one of the plectra which I've made specially for this job. And I put it from the back of the jack 
into the plectrum slot and I slide it in from the back until it's nice and firm and won't budge. It's sticking out of the front. I'm trimming it off at the back and then the jack goes in the slot there and you'll see that there's a bit too much plectrum sticking out the end. So we lift it out and we're going to cut it to length, what we hope is the length. This might take several cuts to get it right. You won't, don't want to cut too much off. Try that again a little bit better. Another half a millimetre and we'll be there. So if you look straight down from above, you'll see about half a millimetre plectrum sticking out bang on. The only other job then is to replace these little dampers um, and do this 56 times um, for the rest of the instrument uh, plus of course replacing all the strings. So in true Blue Peter tradition here's one that I did earlier and let's have a little tune. It's quite a privilege to have two of these amazing instruments here at the same time, so many thanks to the owners.